Hello, everybody. I am Ashley Fields with Yoder S. I honestly did not put my dogs up. Hey, shh. Winnie. So sorry. I um didn't. I, they've been so quiet today, so I didn't think I had to put them up. Stop. So, give me one second and let me get everything pulled up on my end. Winnie. Seriously, girlfriend. Of course, right when I go to sign in, it tries to tell me I have to re-log into my Facebook. So, hello everybody. As you are hopping in, say hello. I did not put my dogs up, so they are obviously barking. I apologize for them. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Mallory. How are you guys? It is a rainy Thursday here. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to assume it's rainy in Pearland, too. I haven't honestly looked at the weather. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and hop into it today. We're going to start with our carrot, and then we are going to be working on our Easter baskets. So uh, on the carrot, I used a mop brush and just did a thick coat, one thick coat of orange and a thick coat of green, and it was good to go with one coat. Um, so I'm going to be using a half inch flat tip brush, what we refer to as a shader. It is not technically a shader, it's technically called flat. Uh, but I'm going to get a little bit of our shading orange and doo -doo -doo, get it mixed up because these paints always separate. So I'm going to just kind of come in with the corner of my brush and then I like to always start at the top and kind of come down. So you have these kind of ridges on here. So I'm kind of really just following along with those. So I like to do this one with like every other one. I will bring that shading outward so that it kind of goes back and forth and flips back and forth in between. Put a little bit more. Come across the bottom. So shading orange, nice and easy. Hey Dolores, how are you? Hey Terry, hey Victoria. So glad y'all are here. How's the weather down there, y'all? Is it nasty in Pearland? Because it is nasty here. So, uh, I have, I really haven't been, y'all, I feel like I've had like kind of a lazy week this week. I uh, had the stomach bug Sunday. I came down with uh, that 24 hour bug that was just horrendous, not fun. Um, and so it's like ever since then, I'm just kind of, you know, out of energy. I'm gonna clean out that brush right quick. And I'm gonna use this same brush and we'll do a little bit of our uh, dark green or shading green up here on the top. And then I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry and we'll come back and outline it later. Uh, yeah, it's rainy and overcast. Yes, yes, that's gross outside y'all. But we really, honestly, I, we haven't had near as much rain as we usually do. So I don't really feel like I can complain because there's some, some winters and falls and winters that all it does is rain. And so uh, for being in Texas in January also at the moment, it's not been very cold at all. And anybody who knows me knows I do not like cold weather. So uh, I was looking at the weather report and trying to see if this rain was gonna be bringing um, a, a cold front with it, but it didn't really look like it, so. I guess I really can't complain too much. This is, um, this brush isn't as broken into some of my others, so I just kinda did a little bit on the perimeter. I'm gonna use the excess left of my brush. Hey Jennifer, how are you, hun? And just kinda come in here and give it, give it a little, a few swish marks, okay? So, so far, it, we did a uh, light orange as our base with some shading orange. Uh, Christmas green as our base on the top with some dark green shading. I'm gonna let it dry and then uh, we will come back to this and um, get that outlined after we get done with our basket. So uh, I do have a basket ready to go that has no um, shading or outlining on it. So we're gonna just kind of get started with this. We're gonna be taking this one and turning it into this one back here behind me. So I think I already Windexed it, but just because I'm not 100% sure, never hurts to Windex again. I painted this, uh, uh, I think maybe last week or week before. So it's obviously been sitting around collecting dust. 
Uh, and if you don't kind of clean that off with some Windex, then you will have issues with your paint. Um, it'll be separating and really just being annoying. So on this one, I started with uh, white as my base. And then I came in and I did a light blue um, on my basket. You could do a pink basket. You could do a purple basket. Really, it, there's so many options that you could choose from. I personally like blue the best, so that's what we're going with. So we did a light blue. You have uh, yellow, purple, mint green, Christmas green, your uh, orange, light orange, light yellow, light pink, all of that. So we're just going to go ahead and come in here and get started on our shading. I am going to be using a half inch brush. Again, I'm gonna grab my yellow um, and we'll start with some yellow on here. I don't know if y'all can hear my puppies. They're over here playing and acting silly. Since it's been nasty outside and they're kind of wet, I don't like putting them in the house because then they'll end up in my bed and on my couches and getting everything really dirty. So I prefer to keep them out here with me. Okay, getting loading up that paint just in that tip. And I'm really just kind of going to follow along some of these lines and just kind of help bring this piece to life a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if my mom is watching, but if she is, she's she would love this, <laughs> this uh, it's not really an announcement, but I think I finally have to retire my favorite script liner. I was trying to work with it earlier and it's splitting open and looks like a big V. And so I was like, well, all right, I guess it's time. So I'm gonna be working on breaking in a new shader today. Uh, oopsie, I just dripped some paint. Um, so when I do go to outline this, it will take me a little bit longer than typical because I don't have my brush broken in yet. Gonna come in here and do some little swish mark. I think I'm gonna make that one a little longer. Same thing, come over here, add a little perimeter shading, a couple little swish marks. Where's my yellow go? Oh, sorry, y'all. I didn't realize a lot of that was out of out of the uh, uh, the camera frame, the view. So sorry. Uh, so my yellow's done. I'm gonna clean my brush out right quick. I'm gonna keep using the same exact brush this whole time. So in between every color, I just kind of got to get it in the water and get it cleaned out a little bit. Get my cat back on here. Now I'm gonna switch. For me, honestly, y'all, I typically just uh, hang out, or I kind of go down the colors, um, and I start with my lighter, and then I go to my darker. Um, so I'll do orange next. I'm trying to think, did I stay? I did stay on the bottom. Whoa, definitely don't have enough paint in there. Just do a little bit right there. Okay. Doesn't have a whole lot of orange in here. I know it looks kind of funky right now, but by the time we get all the shading done and get it outlined, it's going to look really good. Hey, Kathy, how are you doing? I, um, I got a new uh, mount that I'm using for my phone whenever I go live. And I kind of, I was messing with it, trying to get it to go where, you know, it had the best view. And I, I really don't care for the fact that it's almost cutting off my head, but I feel like y'all have a little bit of a better view as far as being able to see the piece if I can manage to keep it in frame. Now I'm going to go to uh, my shading pink and load up my brush a little bit and just kind of come in here and, you know, add a little bit of shading to my pink. Not much, just a little bit. This uh, pattern will end up having so many different colors on it before long. So I think that's it on my orange, or excuse me, on my pink. Can't even keep up with my colors. So what's everybody been up to? What have y'all been painting? 
Have y'all been able to finish up on your Valentine's stuff? Is anybody working on Easter? Uh, Victoria had sent me a photo this morning of one of her Easter crosses, the Happy Easter cross. So, so, so cute, y'all. Super duper cute. Okay, do, 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 do. let me do some mint green. So on the mint green, I used Christmas green to do some shading on that. So let me get this, mix it up just a little bit. Dip my corner. The shading part is really, I think it takes more time in between um, switching colors and washing your brush than to actually shade these colors. So those are my only two pieces of the mint green. So now I can wash that out. And then we just have a uh, blue, purple, and our green of our grass left. So I'm purposely waiting on the blue because the blue I'm gonna go do all the way around. So I wanna get everything kind of done in the middle. Other than the grass, I'll do that one last. Uh, but I'll go ahead and do purple and then we'll do blue just so that I can attempt to uh, keep my arm out of everything and try not to uh, kind of disturb all the paint that we already put on here. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now we can go ahead and do our light blue. Now we have, I think we have six different blues if I'm not mistaken. Um, when it comes to the blue family, when it comes to Easter, I love, love, love the light blue as a base and shading it with medium blue. To me, it has the best pop to it. Uh, so that's kind of why I stick with it. Let me get some more blue. get this filled back up and get a little bit of water added and get a spoon we're gonna get this mixed I add a little bit of water whenever I'm doing shading and outlining uh, for me it I feel that it helps my um, my paintbrush to glide a lot better so uh, if you are somebody who's new to painting perhaps and you feel like you're maybe struggling when it comes to shading and outlining just try adding a little bit of water to that paint and see if um, your strokes will be a little bit more fluid. Alrighty. Now we are going to kind of come in, do the same exact thing with our blue over here. So come in here. I absolutely love this medium blue. Love it, love it, love it. We don't use it that much other than really uh easter oopsie i've got some yellow and purple over here let me see if i can fix that but it is definitely one of my favorite colors and this is also when i do peeps i like to do the um, light blue base with the medium blue shading as well all right now i'm going to start doing kind of my basket uh, what blue did you use on the basket? Yep, so I think, Kathy, you probably asked that before I was talking, but yes, it's a light blue. Uh, I want to say, is that number, number two? I feel like, let me see, sky blue is one, light blue, I think it's two. I know medium blue is four, yeah. But light blue and medium blue, I just love the two of these together. Now, I'm gonna take the excess that I have in my brush. I'm not gonna pick up any more paint. And I'm just gonna kinda of come in here and do a few swish marks that are kind of leading that basket around. I'm gonna flip the basket now and do finish out the bottom, obviously, with our um, medium blue as well. The reason I did not do that green yet because if you guys can, I don't know if y'all could really see it too good, but I'm getting some of that blue up here 
in that grass. And so I prefer to do the grass last when it comes to shading so that I don't kind of cover it up on accident. I kind of have a little pokey piece over here on my brush kind of poking out, but I kind of like the way that it's poking out a little bit. I don't have as much of a um, stark brush stroke, I guess you could say. Take a little bit on your perimeter. So, so far, all I've really done is just follow along with those CNC lines with my shading brush and as well as coming on the perimeter of my piece. That's really it. Now, down here at the base of my basket, my lines are really, really close together. So I'm not gonna try to come in here with swish marks with my shader uh, because it's really just gonna become a big blue blob and I don't want it to do that. So I am done with my blue shading. The only color I have left to shade is my grass. I'm gonna use the dark green on. I gotta be a little more careful on this to try to not make a big mess of the blue. Hey Donna, how are you doing, hun? I'm so glad y'all are here hanging out with me. I know the two o'clock thing is newer. I'm usually on here at night, uh, but for me, it's been a lot better just having more time at night with my family and you know being able to cook dinner and do laundry and, and hang out with them and stuff like that. So I appreciate y'all coming on and hanging out with me at two. I'm glad that I still have some of y'all here. All right, y'all, dark green, same thing we've just done dip in the corner. I'm going to kind of come in here and give that appearance of a little grass. Come on the perimeter. Same thing over here. Now, this might kind of start to look, um, I think my mom was talking about this on a live the other day. I don't remember if it was in the Academy or it was in the Painters Club, but kind of almost having a um, unclean look on your shading. That really can work right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of come in, even if your brush is drying out a little bit. That's okay, keep going with it. I'm gonna use that leftover excess I already had and kind of just come in and add a little bit, a few swish marks here and there. You know, just kind of make it pop. Okay, so there is the shaded Easter basket, completely shaded. I'm gonna move this one because I already do have one um, that is dry that we will use to do our outlining. That way I don't have to sit here and uh, try to uh, blow dry. So let me Windex this, because again, this has been sitting for probably a week. Even if honestly I, I painted this this morning, I would still need to Windex it again. Now that might also be because I'm in a workshop and there's a lot of dust in here. There's a lot of saw dust in here, things like that. Um, those of you that might get to paint indoors, you might not see as many impurities, but for me, I see it constantly. So there is your dry version. So all at this point, all I'm gonna do is grab a script liner and we will start outlining. Here's my new script liner. I no longer have my bent one. I will have to work on this one to get it to bend the way I like it to be, but it takes a little time. So I'm gonna start with, uh, obviously we're just gonna be using black on here. Um, I actually prefer to start with it upside down. So this brush, because it's newer, it doesn't have as a uh, thick or wide stroke. So a lot of times you'll have to see me coming back and doing a couple of strokes because it might start really thin and then end kind of thick. So we'll kind of see. I was um, outlining some stuff earlier, trying to just break in the brush a little bit. Try to get it to you know move in the way I want it to move, which does not always happen. I'm sure there's some of you guys that can 
attests to that. You pick up the brush and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get it to, uh, this is gonna look so good. And then your brush really just doesn't cooperate the way you want it to. So hopefully I'll get this one good and broken in here pretty soon. There's something about some older brushes that are broken that just really help make it a little bit easier. are here hanging out with me this is one of honestly my favorite Easter patterns I think because you have the ability to get so many different colors in here and really make it pop but it's also you know it could be a time-consuming pattern as well but honestly a lot the more time I feel like you can really put into a piece um, the more I think you'll like the outcome too. This one is very fun to paint. Okay, I'm gonna work on my bow here for a minute. Again, I am using a newer script liner, so it also does not hold paint as long or take the paint as far as a good broken in script liner. Whoa. Yeah, I'm really not caring for these lines, y'all. They're not as smooth as I really like them to be, but we'll get there. See, I dripped a little bit of black on here. Pick that up, clean it up right quick. I'm trying to make sure I stay in the camera frame. Because once you start working, it's easy to kind of get out of angle and just not really, you know, pay attention. You guys, I have not cut them yet, but we are doing two more new Easter patterns that will be coming out soon. Um, I know how to run my CNC, obviously. Um, I know how to cut, but we had our CNC guru here last, I think it was last week, and um, he was kind of messing with some of the parameters in our uh, designing software. And so since then, Zach had mentioned to me, my husband, He's like, well, uh, you know, we might have some trouble cutting because some of those parameters might be off. And so I was like, well, okay. So I made some sheets, but then I told my husband, I said, I don't feel comfortable cutting it without you here because then when stuff starts breaking and going awry, you know, I prefer to have him here. So I'm going to wait um, until he gets home. And that way, if things are going awry, I can have somebody's, you know, here to help me. So um, hopefully we'll get those cut maybe tonight or tomorrow night. And um, I'll let y'all know as soon as we do and we'll get them in store. But one is a bunny trio. It's uh, three bunnies together, kind of a profile of the bunnies. And um, the bunnies are patterned. So it's like chevron, stripes, and polka dots, I think. And then one is um, hop. It says hop with the bunny face in the middle. And it's really cute too. So as soon as I get those cut and obviously put in um, to our website and brought to the store, I'll let everybody know. I know on, um, I know a ton of you guys have been coming to the store. We've obviously been do, selling a lot of Valentine's as well as Easter. So I'd, I'm curious to know if anybody's been working on anything. I've been trying to 
uh, work on some Easter stuff, but I've been kind of honestly moving slow, like sluggish lately. Like I just can't seem to get my rhythm back after all the construction and everything going on. So I'm hoping to be back in rhythm here soon. But I don't know, do y'all ever feel like that? Like you lose, you lose your momentum and you lose your rhythm and then it's just kind of hard to find it again after that? Because that's kind of where I've been lately. Trying to get that momentum and that rhythm back, but it just isn't, I don't feel like it's really in sight at the moment. This brush is kind of driving me crazy already. Some of my uh, strokes are really thin and some are thick and I really prefer them to be uniform, but me and new brushes just have never really been the best of friends. I definitely love my worn-in brushes. I don't always feel like I have um, as much control, I guess, with a new paintbrush as I feel like I do with a worn-in paintbrush. Right, do a little bit on my perimeter. Really too, if you think the black is too dark, you could also um, outline this in like brilliant blue. That would be really, really, really pretty. I never even thought about that till just now, but I think a brilliant blue, then that would give you that th the three tones of blue. That would look good. All right, there's the base. Turn it around. Uh, Carla says, I'm working on my Valentine's gnome. Yay! I know we've had, uh, we've sold a, quite a bit of those gnomes. I, I think I've only seen, I want to say I've only seen Danae post um, her finished gnomes. I don't know if I've seen anybody else's. I can't really, I can't remember. Um, but I do love that pattern. I love some gnomes, y'all. I cannot wait to see the Easter gnome that uh, Victoria, I think Victoria is teaching that one, if I'm not mistaken. I cannot wait to see what that one looks like. It's going to be very cute. Now, I want to say we also have, I think we're working on trying to get y'all some St. Patrick's Day gnomes as well, if I'm not mistaken. get them. I don't know what's been going on with my dogs, but I have three dogs. Um, two of them are males and one's a female. And one of my males is 110 pounds and the other one, the other male is 30 pounds. And whatever reason, the two of them like to really get into it sometimes and they get some, get going and get fighting with each other. So a couple of weeks ago, they had a fight and it wasn't so good. And so since then, there's been a lot of tension between the dogs. And um, I really didn't want to put them and lock them up in, inside today while I'm out here uh, because I don't want them getting in a fight. I really, if I'm home, I love to just have them next to me so I can keep an eye on everybody, you know. Okay, let me see. I'm going to move this. I'm trying to move my brush. So there is, I think I just got some paint on my glasses. There is your, uh, your basket completely outlined. So now the only thing I have left to do on here is throw a little bit of white on. So, uh, yay. Pam says, yay, waiting on St. Patrick's Day stuff. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, let's see. Debbie says, can't decide if I want to do blue or purple. Yeah, I'll show you your purple, uh, same exact thing, uh, but in purple, here's, you know, here's my version of it. Uh, I also do it in pink as well. I don't have any pink done here at the house. I think I might have some at the store. So, uh, let's see. Carla says, that would be awesome. I love the gnomes. Yes, y'all. I want to say there's a couple different St. Patrick's gnomes. I'm not sure if we're doing all of them because I want to say there's three different ones. 
I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but Victoria has drawn some some different um, St. Patrick's gnomes, and they're really, really cute. Really cute. I can't wait to show y'all once we kind of figure out what we're going to do exactly. Um, I was going to try to leave the black in my brush and do my carrot, but I'd rather finish this piece out completely, and then we'll switch and finish the carrot out completely, make it a little bit easier on everybody. So I'm going to wash out my script liner and get my white get this mixed up because it always always separates I add a lot of water anytime I'm using these cups they already have a little bit of water added into them so you really constantly have to keep them kind of mixed back together um, whenever you pick it up so let's see Debbie says I picked up uh, small and large peeps or small and large eggs and peeps awesome I can't wait to see what they turn out like Debbie uh, or that was a Debbie Bissonette Debbie Barberi uh, what makes you decide to use white or black on the piece you want blank? What makes you decide to use white or black on the piece you want blank? I'm not sure what that means. What makes me decide to use white or black as far as when I'm outlining or when I'm base coating? I don't know, Debbie, give me a little more direction. Cause I, I, I don't, I, whatever reason my brain ain't following which that doesn't say anything about you because <laughs> there's a lot of days my brain just doesn't follow. I'm just kind of bringing this white in and, and giving a little bit of highlights. This is especially that time when I love my older brush. I, I like the thicker white. Let me turn it. Kind of come in. A little here, a little there. Oh, y'all, I just now realized I forgot a black line right there. I'm gonna have to come back in and get that touched up. Now, down here on the basket, I kind of come in on every little swoop down. I don't know what to call it, every little drop down and kind of just come in and do some white highlights. So you end up having like five little swish marks on each row because it kind of, your basket comes down five different times. So just kind of bring that white in here and get it dressed up a little bit, a little bit across the bottom. Now, let me fix this egg right quick because I, I totally forgot a line and then this piece will be done. Uh, Debbie says, on the piece where the white is above the eggs. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, Debbie. Now I get it. Yes. Um, okay, so yeah, you could totally do that black to kind of put that background like it disappears behind everything. I've honestly always stuck with the white because I did that white as a base coat uh, so that my pastel colors had something to sit on. And for me, I just have always done it like that. I leave it like that because I've already, you know, taken the time to put the white on there. So I just leave it. But really, you could obviously do it in black. In fact, let's just do it and see what it looks like because I've never done it before. I will happily try it out. Let's see what we think. For that, I am going to get, I'm going to get a brush, a bigger brush, not a script liner. But let's put some black on it and see if we like it. I can tell that my um, my bottle has something stuck in here and I'm really hoping it just does not explode. But doing the black in the background or white or you know if you're trying to make it look like a sky and doing a blue, really it's just a personal preference. I think I've just stuck with white because for me it's easier. It's already there, you know? But there's no real rhyme or reason other than that as to why I've always done white on here. We'll throw some black on here and see what we think. You never know unless you try. Okay, there you go. What do y'all prefer? A black background? Or a white background. I actually really like the black. I think it looks good. It almost makes it pop even more. Oh, 
Darn it. There I go, y'all. Okay, let me <laughs> let me move this back and fix this. Because I just got a boo-boo. Ah. But what do y'all think? Do y'all do y'all like the white or do y'all like the back is the, uh, the back? The black is the background. I like the black. I think it looks good. Uh, and yeah, so Debbie says, I was just curious because on the cupids, it was black. Yep. Uh, Carla says she likes the black too. Okay, now, now that it's done, I might need to move it out of my way before I mess up anything else. But yeah, there's, there you go. There's a black background. I almost feel like it helps make everything pop a little bit more too. I like it. So let me move this one out of the way. Give me just a second, y'all. <coughs> I knocked over my mount. I think I broke it. Uh oh. It ain't good, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what I did other than knocking it over. Oh no. There we go. Sorry about that. Get y'all turned back over here. Boop. Okay. Now, let's do our carrot. Okay, so earlier with the carrot, it started out with a light orange background with a little bit of shading orange. So now I'm going to come in here with my script liner and I'm going to outline the carrot in red orange number 19. Can't tell y'all if that's red orange or if that's red. I think that's red. My eyes are always deceiving me. I think this one's the red orange. Yes, this is definitely red. Don't want red, want red orange. So, oh good, see everybody's liking the black. So Debbie, thank you for that question uh, because you know, I would have never put black on it without that question. So, okay y'all, now script liner, a little bit of red orange, number 19, and just do a little bit of perimeter outline nice and simple nice and easy you don't need much if you don't have red orange take shading orange and add a little bit of red to it and that will give you your red orange in fact back in the day before we started buying the red orange already mixed we used to just mix it ourselves. a lot of our colors we used to just mix ourselves, but over time especially when you're trying to do like touch-ups and stuff like that and you're hand mixing paint, it makes it really hard to be able to do touch-ups because it's hand mixed. And so that's why we went back to, really we get everything mixed at the store other than shading red. We still hand mix that one. So did a little bit of that red orange over top of my shading orange. Now I'm gonna grab a little black for the top. Carrots are really fast really easy to do um, quite honestly you could sit here and paint 10 of them really quickly if anybody would you know bought multiples of them and wanted to get them done fast very easy to do start your little assembly line and kind of go down with your brush and do the same color on each one Get a little bit of white and get some highlights on here and then this is done nice and easy that's why we kind of stuck the carrot together with another pattern because it's really so fast there's not much to it come in here and get a little white Ta -da! call it a day so there you go guys there is your carrot and your basket. Now, uh, if y'all will give me one second, I'm gonna get my stuff and I want to do a poly. Uh, let's poly a basket right quick. Um, we have, obviously, we've been teaching now on Facebook since April or May, and we've talked about poly quite a bit, but I do also realize, number one, we have a lot of people that do paint, you're currently painters um, with us, 
and you have been polying, but maybe there's still issues that happen and arise at different times that you'll have questions about. We also have people who are brand new and have no idea about poly. We also have people that are just watching just to watch for fun, you know, that might need a little uh, freshening up. So let me grab my supplies right quick because I did not pull them to the table. Uh, let me get my roller and my poly bottle and we're gonna poly this right quick. Now, uh, this, uh, we're doing our basket, right? Y'all just saw me Windex it, and that's because it's been sitting around in my shop for a couple of weeks finished, but I don't want those impurities getting into my poly, right? So for me, I keep my poly roller in a bag, and I just come and, and put my handle into my roller. Now, when it comes to polying, you have to be careful with the temperature and the weather outside. It will make a difference on your poly. It can make your poly crackle and have a, a cracked effect across the entire top. It can make your poly turn a milky color and it'll dry milky over top of all your hard work and you really won't be happy. So I'll look on this bottle too and I can tell y'all, let me see what the exact temperature is on here. Cause I wanna say, it's not supposed to be below 60 when you use the surface preparation. So 60 to 80 degrees is, is best results. So if it's below 60 degrees, honestly, you're, you're, you're going to struggle with it because it's not going to dry quickly. And that's when you'll see a lot of the crackle, or you might even see it turning that opaque milky color. So right now, currently in my shop at 73 degrees, perfect. If it's a great sunny day outside, the sun is even better than being indoors. That sun can make it dry really fast and it'll will, it will have a nice good coat coverage on it. Another thing about poly is you want to have enough. If you don't have enough poly, you'll get a lot of bubbles. Really, Polly is very temperamental. Um, you know, she's, she's like a, a angry woman sometimes. You know, you don't wanna mess with her. So you wanna make sure that you're Number one, make doing it at the right temperature and weather conditions. When it's really wet and humid, I do not poly. If my humidity is over 85%, I do not poly. That's just me though, you know. Um, but I put a lot on here and I'm, I tell people, I, I think of it like a glazed donut from Shipley's. You want a good glaze on that donut, right? If you're gonna go and order some glazed donuts, you want the glaze everywhere evenly coated. So you don't wanna have thick spots anywhere or have too much in any one particular place. Also, you don't want to try to use a small amount and then make it cover the whole piece. You can do that, but then you'll end up getting a lot of bubbles as well. So I do a nice, it's, it's thick, but it's not so thick that it's pooling, if that makes any sense. And as simple as that, I'm done. I was just, y'all are seeing me kind of pick out some chunks that I happen to have in there. I literally take this, it goes right back in my bag. Okay, I zip up my bag and I can keep this roller for months. I also take my handle and clean that handle off so it doesn't get build up on it. And there is what it should look like when it is wet with poly. It, it just looks like a little, a milky kind of coverage to it. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been with us for a while and y'all been pollying all this time as well. Uh, but I, I think it never hurts to just kind of have a little refresher on that. So uh, I don't see any more questions. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing? I don't see any more questions, y'all. Uh, but I appreciate y'all hanging out with me tonight. I know I'm going to be live on, I think, Tuesday with our uh, He Is Risen Crosses. And then as soon as I get our new patterns cut and posted on our website, I'll post them in the Painters Club and in the Yarder Academy and let you guys know about that because obviously they weren't here on our sneak peek. They're brand new. So 
But thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. Um, if y'all have any questions, always just go ahead and post them in the comment section. I will come back in and answer anything that I might have missed as well. Until next time, y'all enjoy your week. Have fun. Keep on painting your projects. Post your photos when you get done. And we will see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.